It's no big secret that Orochimaru possesses parasitic immortality, the ability to live forever by abandoning the vessel that contains his soul to take over a new one. While his technique Living Corpse Reincarnation Jutsu is powerful, and very reminiscent of the same technique used by various Sith Lords from Star Wars, most notably Emperor Palpatine, and has its flaws much like how Palpatine's does. As noted before, his bodies eventually reject him, causing him to seek a new host. He's had many prospective hosts in the past, but the one he seemed to chase without rest was Sasuke Uchiha. The main reason for this was that he wanted Sasuke's Sharingan. In the past years, Orochimaru had attempted to take Itachi's body, but failed because Itachi was too powerful and managed to beat Orochimaru back. This is what caused Orochimaru to seek Sasuke in the first place. He wanted to take over an Uchiha, mostly so he would have access to their Sharingan, which by this time in the series is rather rare, given that all the Uchiha were slaughtered by Itachi. In the end, he managed to place a curse mark on Sasuke and even entice him to join his village to grow stronger. But unfortunately, Orochimaru was not strong enough to take Sasuke over. And by the time he was able to take over his body, Itachi hit him with the Sword of Tatsuka, sealing Orochimaru away. But I wonder, what if Orochimaru had succeeded? What if Orochimaru took Sasuke's body? Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. This all comes to a head during the Chunin exams and toward the Konoha Crush arc. As I'm sure you'll all remember, Orochimaru's first in-series appearance would be during the Chunin exams arc. It was during the Forest of Death that Orochimaru first approached Sasuke. Sasuke, Naruto, and Sakura assumed that Orochimaru, under a guise, was here for their scroll, which Sasuke was all too eager to give up to save his own life. But unbeknownst to any of them, Orochimaru was here for another prize. Sasuke Uchiha. It was here that he branded Sasuke with the curse mark. This caused excruciating pain as well as a loss of consciousness for our edgy teen ninja, in which Ninja of the Hidden Sound actually attempted to kill Sasuke to put a wrench in their master's plans and become favored by him. This didn't work out too well because Rock Lee is awesome. Sasuke would later display usage of this seal during the same exam, showcasing how utterly cruel he could be with it, something that startled Sakura who begged him to stop. Because of all this, Sasuke was not allowed to use his curse mark during the preliminary matches of the third and final portion of the exam, which nearly caused him to lose due to inability to use chakra lest the mark awaken and take him over. Kakashi would put a seal over the mark to inhibit its influence over him and later taught him various moves in hopes he would not use the seal. But during Konoha Crush, when going up against Gara, who had unleashed Shukaku, Sasuke felt that he had no other choice but to use it. It was actually at this time that Orochimaru was facing off against the third Hokage, using the impure reincarnation jutsu to bring the first and second Hokages back to life. It was also here that the third used the Reaper Death Seal to deal with his rebellious student. However, the third only had enough strength left to seal away Orochimaru's arms, which was more or less a momentary pause in the plans, as opposed to a full halt to them. This would indeed make it far harder for Orochimaru to do more damage to the village, but at some point in time he would jump bodies and continue his reign of terror, all while mentoring Sasuke in hopes of making him his next body. But things didn't really work out too well for him, did it? Instead of taking over his body, he merely ended up a prisoner in the back of Sasuke's id, finally released during the Itachi fight, only to once more be imprisoned, this time in the gourd that Itachi used to sheathe his sword of Tatsuka. But what if, during the Konoha Crush arc, Orochimaru managed to get out of this with his arms? It's a common belief that Orochimaru losing his arms was one of the reasons he needed to jump early before Sasuke truly joined him. After this, Orochimaru is seen using his arms once more, and he doesn't immediately attempt to take Sasuke's body. Why? Likely because of the cooldown his living corpse reincarnation technique takes. It takes three years to cool down after usage, meaning when Sasuke joined Orochimaru, he could not originally use the technique to take his body. So he had to have Sasuke stick with him for as long as possible so he could later take his body. Unfortunately for him, Sasuke was also counting the years and decided there was nothing left to learn from the old snake. But in this what if, we will postulate that Orochimaru's arms were not as wounded as they seemed, and that he could withstand the body rejecting him for just long enough to take over Sasuke's body. 
Having left the village with the Sound 4 and gaining the power of his second stage Curse Mark Awakening, Sasuke rushes off, quickly pursued by Naruto, who finally confronts him at the Valley of the End. The two fight for a time, Naruto using his version 1 cloak and Sasuke in his Curse Mark Stage 2 form. It all boils down to a final attack. The Rasengan versus the Chidori. When the steam settles, it's Sasuke who's standing on top. At this time, he spares Naruto and rushes off to see Orochimaru. After a time of monitoring, Orochimaru would find that he was correct. Not only is Sasuke compatible with the Curse Mark, which is the first step in determining who is capable of becoming a vessel or not, but he also passed all the other tests Orochimaru had set out for him. Orochimaru would not waste any time, as his current body is reaching its limit. Three years is generally the limit for a vessel, but if it is in good condition, he may be able to inhabit it a bit longer before needing to pass to a new body. And while Sasuke is the perfect candidate, he's still pretty young and has yet to reach his full potential. However, Orochimaru believes he can fix these issues, and so one night when Sasuke is not expecting it, Orochimaru would invade Sasuke's body, dragging him into his mindscape where he attempts to take over his body just as he had with Itachi all those years ago. But unlike in Shippuden, Sasuke is startled terrified and stops short of doing anything, and even if he could move, the best he could do is a genjutsu with the Sharingan. However, Orochimaru would so easily break out of any genjutsu cast by someone of such a weak level. True, Sasuke was at a level to be considered a chunin, but Orochimaru was in an entirely different league. So quickly, Orochimaru would overtake Sasuke's body and use the same jutsu to transplant his own face's features onto Sasuke's, giving Sasuke's body a ghostly pale complexion, as well as the standard snake eyes and purple pigmentation around them. But even better than this, Orochimaru now possessed the Sharingan. It was his hope, however, that he would go beyond. He knew that a Sharingan did not end with three Tomoe. After all, he had worked with Itachi for a while when the two of them were in the Akatsuki together. He witnessed that a Sharingan could awaken into a Mangekyo, but to do so, he needed to do something that would bring him sorrow. Something that he truly cared about, he would need to destroy. And there's an issue here. Orochimaru has already cast off most of his worldly bonds. But that is not to say that he's killed his emotions towards them. When Dan died, Orochimaru cried with Tsunade. When he was about to kill Hiruzen, there was a hint of pain in his eyes tears that suggested that he truly cared for the old geezer. If it was from pain of killing what you loved that brought about the awakening of the Mangekyo Sharingan, then that is exactly what he needed to do. Kabuto would be there with him and would ask what it is that he must do. Orochimaru would look over. I must kill the Hokage once more. Kabuto would be confused. You mean Lady Tsunade? Orochimaru now, about the same height and age as Kabuto would nod. I will end Tsunade's life, and the suffering I get from watching my former comrade die will awaken the Mangekyo Sharingan. And so, that would be their first order of business. Cloaking himself to hide his identity, he would take the appearance of Sasuke Uchiha and make his way back to the village. There, he would be met with Sakura, who would be in disbelief. He would fake tears and tell her in the voice of Sasuke that he was wrong. He shouldn't have left and shouldn't have fought Naruto. He would explain that his revenge drove him to Orochimaru, but by the time he reached Otogakure, he got cold feet and left. He would say that he couldn't bring himself to come back out of fear of their reaction, but would later admit that he couldn't bring himself to be out of the village that he loved so much. She would bring him to Kakashi, who would scold him for what he had done and strip him of his headband, which already had a mark through it. He would tell quote-unquote Sasuke that he would need to regain his trust if he wanted a shot to have the headband back. He would eventually need to apologize to the Sasuke recovery team who nearly died to bring him back, and especially would need to apologize to Naruto, who he nearly killed with his bare hands in order to escape. Sasuke Rochimaru would nod and say that he would. He would then be brought before Tsunade to be questioned. Orochimaru was a bit surprised that this has gone so well. He was literally being given the red carpet straight to the Hokage. Upon stepping into her office, he would be first scolded by Tsunade and questioned for the things he'd seen. It would be then that Orochimaru revealed himself, knocking out everyone in the room with the help of Kabuto's Temple of Nirvana technique. He would then stand there over Tsunade's body and look down at her. He remembered all the times he spent with her, his mind flooding with memories of every good time, and of every time he'd ever laughed and cried with her. He would then run a kunai through her heart, ending her life. He stood there and attempted to cry about it and feel sad, but for some reason, nothing would come. He wasn't feeling as bad as he thought he should. Did he need to kill Jiraiya? Was that what he needed? He never felt as close to Jiraiya as he had Tsunade, so if killing Tsunade would do nothing for him, then what would? Orochimaru would escape the village, leaving the Hokage dead and return to Otogakure. There, he would pace the floor, wondering how in the world he would awaken his Mangekyo Sharingan. 
It would be then that Kabuto would mention someone else close to him, maybe someone who relied upon him in the past. Someone he raised up, a subordinate instead of a peer. He would mention Anko Mitarashi. After all, he must have cared for her in some capacity if he went so far as to erase her memories instead of killing her. Orochimaru would nod and say that that's the best bet he has. Kabuto would go off and manage to capture Anko and bring her back to the hideout. Orochimaru intended to up the drama and emotion of this by killing her while she was helpless and awake, so he waited. When she woke up, the two would have a short conversation, likely a trip down memory road, speaking of their shared history all the way up to the Chunin exams and Konohawk Rush. When fully caught up, Orochimaru would pull a weapon, but not any weapon. He would pull out his sword of Kusanagi, which would be something special to him, to get across the message to her what he was going to do. He would tell her to cry, to beg for her life, all the while he would attempt to remember when he trained her as a genin, how proud he was of her growth and abilities. He would then take the blade, press it to her stomach, and slowly but surely apply pressure to pierce through her, bringing as much pain as he could, hoping that somehow the pain might transfer itself to her. But as she cried out and eventually gave up the ghost, Orochimaru still found himself without a Mangekyo Sharingan. He cursed, wondering how he could achieve this thing. Why was it that the only way to achieve a Mangekyo Sharingan was the one way he couldn't achieve it? Why did this ability have to be awakened through sorrow and empathy? Orochimaru had moved past these concepts, and now realized he actually needed them, and it wasn't there. He would curse again. That's when Kabuto would speak. Don't worry, Lord Orochimaru. We'll eventually find a way to awaken it. I won't rest until we do. Orochimaru would stop for a moment. He would look back. Of course. What I need to feel empathy is not an old bond I've already severed. It's a new bond that I'm still fostering. Kabuto would be confused at first, but suddenly he'd realize what he meant. He'd flee the room, attempting to get away. Orochimaru would be after him in a moment with his sword of Kusanagi. Come back here, Kabuto. Your master beckons you. Kabuto would run. He would find a place to hide and would try to mask his chakra. Suddenly feeling his chakra signature disappear, Orochimaru would know that this meant Kabuto was hiding. He would walk the halls, twirling his sword, looking around for anything out of place. Kabuto would be hiding, his eyes closed, breathing heavily, hoping that he wouldn't be found, praying that Orochimaru wouldn't find him. But to his utter terror, Orochimaru would pull him out of hiding and speak. You've already forgotten that I possess the Sharingan? What is our whole quest but for to upgrade it? I taught you better than this and in a moment of self-defense, he would pull a kunai and stab Orochimaru with it. This would take Orochimaru by surprise, or maybe he was sloppy due to the feeling of emotional charge. He almost didn't want to kill Kabuto. He had been loyal and useful from the moment he had taken him in up to this point. But that was the point of it. He would push Kabuto away and swing the blade, cutting deep and leaving Kabuto screaming on the ground. Orochimaru would begin to drop his blade on him, swinging over and over, slowly losing any and all technique. He was merely hacking him to pieces. Kabuto was dead, but Orochimaru was still swinging until there was barely anything left to recognize. Orochimaru would step back, dropping his blade, first with a giggle and then a laugh. He would grab his head as he would lean against a wall, laughing more, tears liberally streaming down his cheek. He laughed as he felt the surge of emotion rush through his body, the ache in his eyes telling him everything he needed to know. The irritation was beginning, so for the next three days or so, Orochimaru would meditate solely on the good times with Kabuto as well as the moment of murderous passion he felt as he cleaved him apart. This is getting really dark. But you guys wanted to do something with Orochimaru. This guy is the epitome of macabre. You look up the word morbid in the dictionary and you'll see Orochimaru. After a few days, he would awaken the Mangyakyo Sharingan. However, as he would study the abilities it granted him, such as the Susano and Amaterasu, he would find that it posed incredible strain upon the eyes, which if overused, might result in blindness. There had to be a workaround. He knew that Madara Uchiha in the past overcame this drawback, returning from blindness and becoming even stronger. He needed to find the way. Orochimaru would once more sneak into the Hidden Leaf and would search the remains of the Uchiha clan's compound for any sign or clue to the secrets of the Mangyakyo Sharingan, but wouldn't turn up much. He would find the Uchiha stone tablet in the Naka Shrine, and would find he could actually read it. Not completely, but enough to make sense of what he needed to know. He would not only learn that he needs to trade Mangekyo Sharingan with a blood relative to achieve the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan, but he would also come to realize that there was still something beyond the Mangekyo. Something that required something in connection to Asura, the sage's son. Of course, this connection was with the Senju, Tsunade's clan. However, there were no Senju left with the death of Tsunade. 
The only other clan that he knew that traced themselves back from Asura would be the Uzumaki clan, which were distant cousins of the Senju. And as it stood, most of the Uzumaki clan was destroyed as well. Well, except for one. And suddenly things begin to pull together. Naruto Uzumaki. Oh, irony of ironies. Naruto Uzumaki and teammate of Sasuke Uchiha, the last one to Orochimaru's knowledge to possess the Senju DNA and connection to Asura. Orochimaru would make a note of that. He would then leave the compound and begin his search for Itachi. Orochimaru could not help but laugh at this. Sasuke had sought Orochimaru out so that he could be strong enough to kill Itachi, and now Orochimaru was fulfilling Sasuke's wishes. He would find Itachi and kill him. Then he would use his Mangekyo Sharingan to awaken the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan within himself. Then came his next target, Naruto Uzumaki. Orochimaru would return to Otogakure where he would send out his ninja to search for Itachi. He would wait and attempt to grow stronger for a while. It would take about two or three months for him to properly get used to his new body and pull out its dormant power. It was no lie that Sasuke truly was a worthy candidate. He already possessed an incredible well of chakra for someone his age, all due to the fact that he was training to fulfill the very objectives that Orochimaru was currently attempting to complete himself. Given his experience, he could truly make this body a weapon. And so he trained, tirelessly and relentlessly, to make it work for him. Eventually, one of his Otonin would return with news that they found Itachi on the hunt for one of the tailed beasts. Orochimaru would immediately head out in that direction. Eventually, he would find him. Itachi would be with Kisame Hoshigaki, his partner, but not for long. Orochimaru would use his Amaterasu to set Kisame aflame and kill him. He would then approach Itachi, who would speak to him. I see you finally awakened the same eyes as me, Sasuke. But do you really think you have what it takes? Or will I finally be the last Uchiha today? Orochimaru would smile. You've been the last Uchiha for months. Itachi's eyes would narrow. Orochimaru, what have you done? Orochimaru would smile. The one thing you never could. But don't worry. Your baby brother will forever live in my heart. He would offer a sadistic smile. Itachi would scowl and attempt to use Amaterasu on Orochimaru, but it would be cast aside by Orochimaru's very own. They would attempt to place each other under Genjutsu, but would fail. Pulling his sword of Kusanagi, he would attack Itachi. Itachi would reveal a kunai and pull back defending. He would attempt to use Amaterasu on Orochimaru, however, as it struck, Orochimaru would shed his skin to survive. Itachi would form a Susano to attack, and Orochimaru would do the same. This would be a rather dangerous battle given that Itachi's Susano possessed the Blade of Tatsuka and also the Yada Mirror. These two abilities made Itachi's Susano nearly invincible. No attack could land on it, and no strike could truly defend against that blade. This was a dangerous thing. However, Orochimaru would coat his Susano's blade in the black flames of Amaterasu, hoping that this way, if the Yada Mirror made contact with it, all it would cancel out of the time would be the flames. The battle would go on for a while, neither gaining purchase on the other. Itachi's Susano truly was invincible. Orochimaru also worried for his own chakra reserves, but he would notice that Itachi was beginning to falter. Was this a feint? A psych out to force Orochimaru to get careless? He would notice him coughing up blood. Orochimaru would smile. Itachi was sick. That's what this was. Orochimaru would capitalize on this turn of events to press the attack and would manage to mortally wound Itachi. When it was certain that the battle was over, Orochimaru would approach Itachi and finish him off personally. He'd smile. Are you happy, Sasuke? Your clan has been avenged. Now, to claim my prize. He would take Itachi's Mangekyo Sharingan and return to Otogakure where he would have them transplanted. After a little while, about two weeks I would say, Orochimaru would remove the bandages and possess the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. Essentially, he could now spam Amaterasu and Susana without any drawbacks. Well, I mean, Chakra would take a hit, but not as bad as before, and he certainly wouldn't be straining his eyes. But this wasn't it. There was still one more step. Whatever sat beyond the Mangekyo Sharingan, the eye that possessed the Samsara, the Rinnegan, and that required him to take Naruto. Orochimaru needed to know where Naruto was. He would once more seek out the village hidden in the leaves. Danzo Shimura was currently the head of the village. Orochimaru would seek out Naruto, but wouldn't find him. He would then seek out Sakura and ask her where Naruto was. She would ask him why he killed Tsunade. Orochimaru, still under the guise of Sasuke, would smile and ask where Naruto was once more, kindly. Sakura would tell him that he was off training with Jiraiya, and then ask him to clarify why he attacked Tsunade. Orochimaru would not answer, he would merely kill Sakura and leave. So, 
Naruto's training with Jiraiya. After some time, he would locate Jiraiya in the middle of training Naruto. At this time, Naruto would have been working on controlling his chakra. He would have grown stronger this way, but would also have gained a resistance to Genjutsu through his training with Gamariki. But that barely matters even the least to Orochimaru. He just needs Naruto alive. He would attack them. Naruto would gasp and call it to Sasuke, but Jiraiya would put his hand in front of Naruto to keep him from seeking to engage immediately. That isn't Sasuke, Naruto. Not anymore. Orochimaru would smile. You know me too well, Jiraiya. Jiraiya would scowl. Tell me, was it you that killed Tsunade? Orochimaru would shrug. Guilty as charged. Naruto would interject. Wait, Sasuke killed old lady Tsunade? Jiraiya would look at Naruto. No, this isn't Sasuke anymore. Orochimaru took over Sasuke's body. Naruto would look over. See, I told you this is what would happen if you joined up with him. Orochimaru would laugh. If Sasuke could hear you right now, he might tell you that you were correct. Jiraiya would ask what Orochimaru is doing here, and Orochimaru would state that he's here for Naruto. Assuming Orochimaru wants the Nine Tails, Jiraiya would attempt to protect Naruto. But Orochimaru would not be dissuaded. The two would do battle. He would use the Wild Lion's main technique in an attempt to protect himself, but at this point, Orochimaru can strike him with the disembodied hand of his Susano. Jiraiya would achieve Sage Mode, which he attempts to use for many different attacks, including a Sage Art Big Ball Rasengan, though this is still counted by Orochimaru Susano. Jiraiya would attempt to summon Gamabunta for battle, and Orochimaru would summon Manda. And together, these titans would battle against each other for dominance. In the end, though, Orochimaru would come out on top, managing to kill both Jiraiya and Gamabunta. With both of them dead, he would focus on Naruto, who would attack him with his version 1 cloak. Orochimaru would basically shrug this off and taunt Naruto. Naruto, having witnessed his master die at the hands of the man who stole his best friend's body, gives into his own hatred and the influence of the Nine Tails, and awakens his version 2 form, which is a lot more for Orochimaru to handle. Orochimaru is strong, yes, but this is even getting to be a little much for him. He would manage to defend himself well from it, though he receives many wounds. Fending it off like a lion, he would manage to turn the beast over and expose its underbelly, where Orochimaru remembered the seal being. He once more would use the technique he had in the Forest of Death, the Five Element Seal. He'd plunge it into the tailed beast's stomach. It would let out a roar and slowly the energy would dissipate, leaving Naruto with severe cellular damage. Orochimaru would see this and note that he needs to hurry if he wishes to save Naruto from death. He would return to Otogakure with Naruto and would have him admitted, using various healing jutsu to heal his injuries. But they would keep him sedated for the entire time in an attempt to keep him under control. Orochimaru would then begin the process of implanting his body with more and more of Naruto's tissue. When a small chunk doesn't work, he adds more. He attempts to speed up the process, and with his various techniques, he manages to gain all the cellular matter he needs and ends up awakening the Rinnegan in both eyes. He would laugh as he knows this is exactly what he needed. And with that, things would go quiet for a while. Orochimaru would slowly begin to study his Rinnegan for a while. As he did, he would learn how to do things that even blew his own mind. For this time, he would just begin to plot his next steps, and things would be quiet for a time. We skip to the Shippuden era. Orochimaru is starting to reach the end of his vessel's lifespan, and it's looking like he might need to change bodies again. But he's been keeping his eyes open, and his Otonin have been gathering more information and growing in strength and number. Orochimaru keeps his Rinnegan secret from all but those few he trusted. All things being considered, Orochimaru needs to do nothing but let things play out and then use his Rinnegan to hijack it all. He would have managed to finish deciphering the stone tablet, recognizing what the Akatsuki would be planning. The Kazakage rescue mission would occur minus the rescue, meaning that the Akatsuki get Shukaku and Garo remains dead. Sasori would meet with Orochimaru where he would present him with Naruto who was the Ninetales Jinshuriki as a gift to purchase his freedom. The Akatsuki suppression mission would take place, but would not be quite as successful as before. Not much after this occurs until the Five Kage Summit, where Donzo actually would not die. They would form a united front to stand against the Akatsuki, who would plan to awaken the Ten Tails. The Ten Tails is revived with Pain and Tobi at the helm. However, before either can use it, Orochimaru would reveal the ultimate Uno reverse card by using his Rinnegan to hijack the Ghetto statue and absorb it before anyone else can, becoming the Ten Tails Jinchuriki. With this power, he would manage to defeat the Akatsuki as well as the United Shinobi forces and would come out on top where he would take control of the entire world. He'd be certain to kill all five Kage and he'd spend a lot more of his time finding all of the various Kinjutsu of each nation and would continue to study and experiment with the Kekai Genkai of every clan that possesses one. And with his immortality, he would have all the time in the world to do so. 
I could see Black Zetsu trying to sneak his way in, but I doubt he would do much more than fry to Orochimaru's Amaterasu. I could also see Orochimaru studying and experimenting on other Zetsu to learn their abilities. Orochimaru would institute a one-world government, with him serving as the supreme leader, and nobody could really stand against him as at any moment he could destroy the world. However, he doesn't. In fact, he's actually improving the world through his rule. Technology would increase, and while his regime is quite authoritarian, he's not overly cruel. All he really cares to do is study and learn more and put everything into use. The lives of ordinary citizens who possess no known mutation of Kekka Genkai would actually improve faster as bullet trains, televisions, and cell phones would come into existence. The era of Shinobi would start to come to an end, and the era of mass industrialization would begin with new creature comforts appearing at every turn. Medical science would leap forward by decades, if not a full century, and self-sustaining energy would no longer be a dream for the future. Orochimaru at his heart is a scientist, and the things he would discover at his height of knowledge I could see him sharing with the citizens. Of course, there would always be those who would rise up against him, and those he would make a spectacle of. But beyond that, his approval rating would likely be higher than any of the Kage in history. And when it comes to Teneri Otsutsuki, I really don't think it would be much of an issue. Teneri would definitely attack and try to wipe everyone out, but even if Naruto hadn't been there, the world would have been fine when Kumogakure showed their moon-busting Death Star Super Laser. So I doubt Teneri would be a big issue here. If anything, it just means Hinata and Hanabi would likely die too, but that's about it. As for Momoshiki and Kinshiki Otsutsuki, now this would be a bit of an issue. However, I would assume at this point Orochimaru possesses enough knowledge to have a good sealing technique or something else to smash them with. And Ishiki? It still requires Kawaki, who would escape still. And if Orochimaru got into contact with him and knew that Ishiki needed him to revive within three days, I could see Orochimaru killing Kawaki just to deal with Ishiki and kill him. Now, there is still a chance that Ishiki and Momoshiki could both bring Orochimaru down, but I'm banking on Orochimaru's intelligence and knowledge of various jutsu. Sometimes, in the Naruto world, brains beat brawn. Kakashi himself isn't really considered all that strong, per se. He doesn't have a massive chakra well, but is intelligent enough and possesses enough chakra control to be able to fit the Kage rank. So I think it's feasible that Orochimaru could beat both of these threats if he plays it smart. But that's just what I think. What do you think about this? What do you believe Orochimaru would do if he had taken Sasuke's body successfully? Do you think he would pursue the Mangekyo and the Rinnegan like this, or do you think he would simply be content with all that he has and fade into the background while the Akatsuki do their thing? Be sure to leave a comment below and let us know. We would love to hear from you. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you haven't yet. Ring the bell to receive notifications from our channel whenever we drop a new video like this one. Peace out.